So hey everyone, uh, I'm Thibaut, going to uh, present uh, more or less how we like monitor like uh, uh, the Cloudflare IPFS gateway, uh, which is slightly different, I think, from like the talk that there's been this morning, which we're more focused on measurements. Um, of course, monitoring involves some measurements, but like more targeted at like operation um, and how like we can like best like see the health of like our active system depending on like the health of like the, the overall IPFS network um, or, or more generally the, the, this kind of presentation. So uh, yeah, as I say, uh, I'm Thibaut, I'm a research engineer at Cloudflare. Uh, I work mostly on distributed web projects, IPFS, Ethereum, uh, and some others. Uh, I tend to like, like croissant. Um, I mean, there were no croissants this morning, uh, but then I did not know that when like, I was writing the slide. Uh, but definitely, like, if there are some croissants, happy to like meet you next to the croissant. Uh, like always, fun discussion. Uh, uh, the talk today, I uh, will like present an overview, uh, like a high level overview of like what Cloudflare system looks like. Um, then, uh, going to present what is monitoring um, at Cloudflare, like what are the different systems we're using, um, and then where we think like there could be some improvement to where we go next. Um, I'll try to be short so that like there can also be time for question in terms of like, should it be start an experiment based on like this infrastructure or like questions uh, like more generally. So um, Cloudflare architecture, uh, which is like kind of the place we call home uh, at Cloudflare because well, I mean, that's where you are. Um, so yeah, Cloudflare uh, it operates an IPFS gateway, which is uh, an HTTP interface to the IPFS network. Um, more uh, generally, if you like, take like the the eyeballs, which would be your end client, would make an HTTP connection to like cloudflareipfs.com or like another domain, reaching out like Cloudflare's Edge. So Cloudflare's Edge um, is composed of like two hundred, maybe more, like point of presence. Uh, where we have like our metal, um, that's where we operate like um, some Cloudflare workers, some caching, uh, and then where we like try to like basically like what makes like the gateway fast in terms of like we cache the content as close as we can to the users and like try to have like most of the logic there. Um, if the content is not in the cache, then we reach out to like uh, IPFS nodes um, that we're running um, in the background and these nodes are actually the ones that are in contact with um, the IPFS network. Um, it's not Kubo nodes, uh, but it's like um, he heavily based on the historical Go IPFS as a library. So there's like custom setting for the nodes, should be like in terms of the peering, the uh, data store, um, some of the strategy around uh, like what kind of verification we do. Uh, for instance, we like always perform like some like DNS sec even on the client. So like, like there's some strategy, uh, strategy um, there. For at each of these steps, we would like to inform and know some metrics and we would like to, to better understand like, uh, like how they work. And so there are kind of like two types um, at self data generation that like there's active monitoring uh, that we perform with the IPFS monitor. Um, and then there's like more uh, passive monitoring that is generated as requests come through. Um, of course, the IPFS monitor also generates some like requests which go to our data store, uh, but not only like the requests going to the data store and to like these various um, stores are generated for like, like the traffic. Um, we'll go in more detail into like how we use like each of these um, system and, and this data store, um, but overall that's the idea. What's also difficult is like while the system from like the outside may seem simple you have also a lot of cases which could make it harder to analyze and understand like what's happening um, when you start to have an issue for instance uh, you can have like a chain of service so for instance instead of like accessing um, cloudflareipfs.com you may have actually like a cache gateway in front which for instance protocol lab is operating uh, with an ft storage then the same gateway may also be chained with like another customer and so um one of the challenges like trying to understand when we have an issue find the root cause what the path was going to um and what's even more interesting is like each of these um of these services may have like their own caching strategy their own invalidation um and trying to find a good view um through that could sometimes be challenging um yeah the, the main thing is like kind of the attitude when trying to debug what do you look to what do you look for how do you um, understand the data and the, like build those graphs? So um, if we take like a look at like the 
monitoring, uh, which is kind of like, I mean, made naturally from like an operational perspective, because you need to understand I don't know, if your like gateway start to answer, I don't know, in 10 seconds instead of like less than a second, then like you need to understand like what's happening or like if there's like new things in terms of like content routing, etc. You need, you, you need to be like alerted and have the tools to, to, to debug that live. Um, so the first one I mentioned was like Prometheus, so Prometheus is a time database. Um, one of the kind of like particularities like you can have like only low cardinality on Prometheus, so you don't, you tend not to have a lot of information um, like in like tagging and context available around, but it's very useful because like you have like you can like easily follow and track service on time. Um, it's limited to numbers, uh, while you can have like a huge set of numbers, uh, like it's limited on numbers. Um, and like we allow like for live monitoring. Um, so an example, like, um, take like what a Prometheus, uh, metrics looks like. Um, you would have like a name and various tagging. So like for IPFS, uh, you may want to know like what the total number of requests, um, that have been, uh, received on, on the, on the backend, you like can tag it, for instance, like, yeah, I have like a Kubernetes namespace, uh, the handler, which like what the gateway and the type of method that has been received. Um, and all that like allows you like then to perform some computation over, uh, to get like those like beautiful graphs, um, on Grafana. You have a very set of metrics, um, that you can have uh, on Prometheus. So like, um, Kubo definitely like exposes a lot of that, but you can like also very easily like customize, um, and add like, uh, metric, uh, should it be like for timing, uh, or, or for answers, um, through that. Another thing, which is, um, like quite interesting for, um, for following what's happening and for monitoring is Sentry. Um, so different compared to Prometheus is like Sentry, like usually we tend to focus on errors, um, because it's great at like giving a lot of context and like a lot of metadata around like particular events that happens. And the good thing with Sentry is like, you can also like, um, map it, uh, to like the actual code, um, that has been generated the error. Um, and so that tends to give a lot of context in terms of like, when you have an error, you like already know, like how many times this error has been happening and like which piece of code is actually responsible for generating this, this error. It doesn't give you I don't know, like timing context. So it doesn't give you a uh, more, um, high score, uh, like uh, full trace, but like, it's very good to pinpoint, uh, on the instrumented code where actually you have an error generated. It may be more global. You may need, I don't know, like it may be like a causal thing, depending on the context, but at least you would know the point where the, the error has been yielded. Um, finally, the last thing I want to mention, we like, um, using ClickHouse a lot. Um, so ClickHouse is a more, it's probably like out of all those tools a more traditional, uh, database. So it's a column based database, which allows to like store, um, arbitrary data. Um, this data is also sampled. So like that allows when you have like an event that like is repeated a lot to just not store this event, like, uh, as many times as it happens. Um, it's very useful for like these kind of arbitrary data. So for instance, like if like you want to know which CID is being accessed the most or like for, uh, like which, from which, um, domain, which kind of IP, like which country, etc. Um, this is where you would store this data. Um, it's, um, more suited for like long-term storage, uh, than like the, the, the previous data. Um, and you can like access and filter, um, these data to like normal, um, SQL queries. Um, basically this is also the same backing Cloudflare analytics. So in terms of like the logic from like when we started like operating the service, it like made a lot of logic because we could already ex leverage the existing infrastructure without having like to manually operate our own like cluster, uh, should be like Postgres or, or click house cluster. Though. Final thing I wanted to mention is like the IPFS monitor. So all the previous tools I was mentioning, uh, were about, uh, passive monitoring. It's like they do receive data. And then like, we try to build query and build model on top of them to understand what's happening. Um, IPFS monitor is a bit of a different thing. It's like, we started to see a lot of like thing could happen on IPFS, but, uh, we didn't have a good tool to actually like measure live how like these scenarios were performing. So I don't know, like the publication of like an IPNS name, if the IPNS name has been cached, if it's not cached, 
the publication of the CIDs, the access through a DNS link. Um, and so basically the IPFS monitor is really like this kind of like um, active probing in a black box monitoring way um, so that you can test like these multiple scenarios, export them through Prometheus. And so like you're also able like to track them live. Um, some of the results we got and which like are like far more described like on the blog we have uh, for like the newly created content and in cache content and unavailable CIDs, we just do measure all that. And like, we tend to see that like, co like corresponding to like the data that had been shown this morning, publishing content is actually like, takes some time. Um, and yeah. Now that we have all that, there's definitely like a lot in terms of like models, things we could like already improve on that. But the main question is like, where do we go next? Um, and this is more kind of a like less <laughs> of things rather than like uh, precise uh, pre 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 precise step. Um, one of the main things like we would like to do and like would like to see is more like long term like long term rating of the peers we're connected to, um, and also like tracking of this peer. I think like at the moment like when you're using Kubo and like when you're using like IPFS, um, you have like all these like peer logic which is kind of like more abstracted, um, and there's no like easy way or streamlined way to actually like say okay like i want to like keep a snapshot of my peers like over time to understand like which one are actually reliable have more control in terms of like the, the latency uh, i think as Gil mentioned this morning in terms of like the uh, actual response or the bandwidth are already requested from them um there's been a lot of tooling that has been done I mean, like on BitTorrent to try different strategies should the peer like be malicious should it be less malicious is it more of a leecher, uh, et cetera? And I do think having this on IPFS would be uh, like really nice. Um, similarly, content providing and content routing is like an area for improvement. And also uh, I think like the, 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 this workshop uh, and the work being done um, to that extent to actually like measure and understand like what's happening here for different strategy uh, is important. Um, something that's less mentioned usually for IPFS is like, but the more of a problem for gateway is like the names um, and the resolution that are associated because ipfs content is not only accessed through a hash but like you tend at least for a gateway to access through a dns name access to like through an ipns domain even accent like through ens for instance and like all these resolution have cost um they do have like different like standards in terms of like the ttl uh in terms of like the way they organize the content um and so being able like to track and standardize is small uh, would be quite interesting as well. Another area to actually like measure is like is actually like the content layout like on IPFS. Um, you have like these CIDs, which like each of them uh, has may have a different layout. Actually, like is there some overlap to like better inform like the production of content so that like you actually like leverage uh, the fact that like you can share blocks uh, for, for multiple content and multiple CIDs. Um, bit swap monitoring um, that's included by default, like in Kubo, uh, is rather uh, primitive. Um, and so having more, uh, more view and vision into that uh, would be quite nice. I've seen there's been like some work uh, with the new clients that are being put out uh, to, to, to actually like extend um, this bit swap monitoring um, on top of like adding the bit swap, uh, like improving bit swap itself. Um, and so exposing it from a gateway perspective would be rather interesting. On another note, uh, distributed tracing to like actually improve at various levels of the gateway uh, would definitely be an improvement. It's start to be integrated into um, Kubo actually to some extent. Uh, basically, the idea is like um, when you do a request, you actually understand like where it goes and where it spends time. Um, at the moment, like in Kubo, uh, it's kind of a no or nothing from what I've seen. It's like uh, you can like start it like really and see, really focus on debugging. So like if you like coding or, like developing K Kubo and like you want to debug, you can actually like start like a Jaeger instance and have uh, the traces distributed. But ideally, you would also like to operate that like in a production setting. Uh, so you would like on your production gateway to pass like some kind of like on some kind of header or some kind of setting so that uh, you're able like to trace uh, the the request to like your whole system. Um, that's something we already have at Cloudflare uh, for um, most of our infrastructure. Like we know how much time we spend in the cache, we know how much time it takes to like do a DNS resolution, uh, but also gaining and like uh, pairing that with the visibility we could have um, in Kubo and Go IPFS would be quite interesting. Um, finally, on kind of same note, integration with enterprise tooling uh, is not a goal of Kubo and is not a goal of Go IPFS. 
um, it's been at least like for operators, like one of the main challenges, like one of the main area where like there's been time spent. Um, and so definitely like um, concerting uh, these efforts and like, like thinking more, more about it, I think uh, is one like important step uh, to go to. Should it be like for measurements? Because like, I mean, the more people you have involved in the measurements, like the, the better the measurement is, or at least like the more data you have and like you can filter and understand if it's better. Um, and, and also like on those areas uh, for, 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 for these challenges. Um, and yeah, that's it. Uh, so thank you. I uh, wanted to keep that short and open for questions. Yes. As much as you're comfortable sharing, can you talk about the custom config that you're letting this notice? Yeah. Uh, so basically, uh, IPFS node is based on Kubo now. Uh, Kubo is a library, even though Kubo is meant to be a node. So like, they probably like some naming there. Uh, but yeah, basically, like we we have uh, we use Go IPFS as library um, so that like we can have like a um, custom peering strategy. Uh, we have uh, also we uh, we're operating like certain like internal Kubernetes cluster to Cloudflare, which like we are not comfortable exposing the IP of. Um, and so we have like, like a forward proxy for that. Um, we have like a custom data store implementation so that all our nodes can actually share the same data store in the back end. So like you also reduce the number of like requests you're making to the outer IPFS network. Um, this use of like Kubo as a library also like uh, very helpful to like introduce new features should be like for research, for instance, like or the DNSSEC uh, verification and validation is something that just doesn't exist in Kubo. And so like that's something we, we add on top. Um, should be to like add the caching headers, uh, which now have been upstreamed, I think. Um, and just like very string things through that. Is there something in particular you were interested yeah, or? Great. Okay. Yes. Custom query strategies for uh, what do you mean duplicate peer? I mean, multiple Yes, so not at the moment, uh, but definitely that's something like we are looking to do at least like. Um, First of all, like evaluating what is this global set of peer we should peer to. Um, I think it's already like a, an important problem because you don't know which peer is actually good uh, and you don't know how you should update this thing. Um, like for instance, like Ethereum um, has been doing like this, this some of this like with like the EasDisco um, thing where like you can actually like just let a daemon run and it will just like export you uh, like a set of peers with like against a certain like, like rating. Um, thing for IPFS that doesn't exist yet, but yes, that should be the case. Um, all these peers share a set of like curated, um, like all our nodes share, share a set of curated peer, uh, which like they are appearing with. Um, and yeah, uh, just behind your list. Yeah, do you guys support the search on IPFS? So if I no so that's not something we're doing uh at the moment that's something we're thinking about but re like we need to consolidate like the um like content routing that we have in order like to actually like properly provide la 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 like this content reliably to the network without like overloading our infrastructure yeah, I'm curious about how your customers, like if they create a gateway, one of the big problems with like a gateway is not being back. Um, so we stand up five gateways that get crushed by every imaginable source of data that are open to the world and they get crushed ten times in one. So I'm curious about how you guys offer from a from that kind of perspective. Or if you tackle that problem yet, like um, I mean the fact that we don't have open gateways means that we kind of tackle that larger issue. So I'm curious about you've experienced the uh, flood issue yet. Yeah, uh, so like Gateway have kind of like two interfaces which like they can get reached on. There's like the uh, like 
BitSwap interface, which like we just blocked. So like it's not an, an issue here. Um, on the browser, it's definitely a challenge, um, and especially been one of like our main challenge initially because of, like the like gateway was like out as a research product on like laughlet-ipfs.com. Uh, we've received a fair share of like uh, interesting requests. Um, and so, um, like devising strategies to like prevent that has been, um, kind of like a, like evolving, um, thing. And like one of the first thing we, we would try to do was like to do like rate limiting to like be a bit more like fair in terms of like, uh, how the content is distributed. But you also see that like not all requests are created equal. Um, for instance, if you have like, um, you want to do a streaming service on IPFS and like using a gateway, well, um, may not something you want, we wanted out of like a public gateway um, to serve. Um, and so like, it's really like up to like the public gateway operator like to decide how that goes. Um, that's also why uh, for like, like the, like now that like IPFS is more of a product at Cloudflare, uh, like we're better able to, um, provide the tools to customers in order for them to define like what they deem is a good content or not, but they are the one like to actually pay for that. So um, that, yeah, that really depends. You mentioned uh, IDRAP, the addresses of the internet from the world. Um, yes, do you have any particular transport or whatever? Yeah, um, so our nodes are uh, all communicating over like uh, TCP, uh, which is another challenge. Uh, but like, uh, <laughs> like, like, like they've all like been communicating through TCP and like the forward proxy is like uh, just like a TCP forward proxy. Um, we like relaying traffic uh, to, 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 to our edge and then like uh, propagating traffic uh, from these edge. Yeah, yeah. So we like basically uh, we're leveraging like the Clough like TCP um, offering. Um, I think it got renamed. Historically, it's been named Spectrum. Um, and so we're leveraging Spectrum in order for like mitigating this like TCP um, activity. Oh. <laughs> Can we go to the Grafana screenshot we had earlier, or is it one of the slides? I think that was the Y axis was using. Yes, uh, it's, on it's on purpose. It's on purpose. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. And the, these are not 500s, right? The green bars that. No, no, no. The green. No, no, no. The green bar is 200. Okay, because it's also green at the bottom. Uh, yeah, okay. so 200 is like really on the left, yeah, yeah, uh, but like it's okay. like rather small, like cutting the y axis, like just. Okay, okay. <laughs> yes. Um, just to say, did you do the last uh, one before last slide? Uh, so, yeah, on the bit for wondering, is it that part that um, the transfer that you're actually interested in? So, uh, uh, where have you the problems? I mean, there have been problems, I think, reported when files are too big uh, or dials are too deep or too wide or, you know, uh, things like that. Is it the same, what you'd be interested in? I, I think it's not specifically like, um, I, so, so it's more like the default metrics exposed by, uh, like by GoIPFS for BitSwap uh, are rather limited. Um, and do not allow for like a an easy um, like an easy debugging. Like you can see on like the number of like um, active requests, you can see like how many you've sent, etc. But I mean, as you mentioned, like you don't have like this bucket about like the size of the file, uh, or like just just have like extend like the variety of metrics uh, that are available. Mm -hmm. And okay, questions. Oh, yeah. Not all of these points. Uh, <laughs> so the uh, efficiency of content layout, can we, you mentioned that. Yes. So the efficiency of content layout is not just from things like specific to the gateway, uh, right. but like more generally, you have like all these data on IPFS, which are like divided like in blocks, which like um, can be overlapped. Um, and so the question is, there's like likely a lot of data, but like, is it actually like 
efficiently like partition so that you can like you actually share blocks between like multiple CIDs. Um, and that I don't know. It's not that important. I mean, it's a bit important for the gateway so you can minimize the cache, but it's like even more important for like from a pr provider perspective where you actually like want when you're constructing the DAG on top of your data, you would like to inform, I mean, one of the strategy could be to inform the way you build the DAG based on like the overall content you have. So you're actually like benefiting from like this, um, this content layer structure. Yeah. And um, last one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. for, for these areas, are you, do you plan to actively kind of put time and work on these? Uh, I'm trying to judge whether, you know, I uh, should spend some time after this today to see how we can, we can collaborate perhaps uh, on things that are interesting. So, most likely not on all of these. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but like for some of these, yes. I mean, there, there are like some which like we are actively like working on. Um, I would say like the name resolution, uh, something like we're um, actively working on. Uh, the uh, measuring like long-term peer rating uh, is something like we also like considering um, distributed tracing and like integration with enterprise monitoring is more of a like um, ongoing effort because that's what we need for our operation but we don't know yet how much it benefits others. Good, thank you.